Hey everybody, I wanted to do another um, analyze your own swing. Not really an analyze your own swing, but maybe more of a of a case study on how you guys can work with um, a key foundation in the swing to help you guys improve. So um, in this case with Jim, he's an average golfer. Um, he's lost some speed. He's the contact got a little bit inconsistent. Um, so really, the the big priority is just tr trying to help him hit it further again. Um, and try to hit it more solid more often so that he knows where the ball is going to go. So when we started with Jim, this is a 7 iron. He was averaging only 86 ball speed, 73 club speed. Uh, his efficiency was 1.18 in and he was 2.5 out, outside in. Um, not really fun golf to play with if those are your numbers, if you were swinging at much higher numbers in the past. So with Jim, you got your classic um, arm swing kind of guy. Uh, cuts across it, uh, efficiency is very low just because just he cuts across it with a lot of loft, um, with way open club face, and you can see he doesn't turn much. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you guys can add more turn if you're someone who struggles with, loss, with, with less turn. So if you're someone who's lost speed, who's lost consistency because of age or because of inflexibility, if maybe you feel like you're inflexible, whatever it may be, this is a great video to look at to show you guys how you guys can add some rotation back into your golf swing to help you guys come from the inside, to help you guys swing faster again, to help you guys hit the ball more solid. All things you can do to play better golf, to have more fun playing golf. So if we watch Jim swings uh, frame by frame, you can see a lot of things that I don't really like in my preference, such as his hands pick up very early, he's rolling the club face way open because he's rotating his forearm so much, and then as he goes up, there's no depth, there's no turn, and there's no width. So you can see his hands are in line with his shoulders, his hands are his hands are low, um, his right arm is really folded, all things that zap you of consistency and power. When you watch him from the face-on view, you can see arms and wrist only, um, and no turn. You can't see any of his back, right shoulder, any of his back, um, which shows that he's not turned very well. So because of all that, He's forced to just try to use his arms, his hands come out towards the ball to start the downswing in that direction. Shaft is very steep, tries to shallow it light, that's why he's only two and a half outside in. Um, if he were to rotate properly from that from that point, he'd be like 10 degrees outside in and just not playable at all. So he's trying to make it playable, but still not very because it's, it's just very glancing blows. So priority one um, is to just help him turn more. So. With Jim, we have to learn how to turn more. So when we watch um, the video on the left here where I'm showing him a drill, I'm showing him how to turn easier, okay? I'm having him turn his right hip back in this direction um, instead of in this direction. So with him, um, if you watch the video on the right, his hips bump away from the target first, which slides, which makes him not able to turn. You can see his right leg is two-pieced where the top and the bottom don't match up because he's not letting his right hip turn back and not letting his right leg straighten and lose flex. You can see on the video on the left, his leg is more one-piece now. So if you turn properly, that leg should look more one-piece at the top of your backswing. So I have him, and he's feeling a turn here. You can see his right leg just turns back. Love that. I'm having him feel like his upper body is turning way behind the ball. I want him to give him as, as much freedom as possible to turn. I don't really want him fixated on trying to turn with your head still and all that because generally that restricts the movement. So for him, I care about the turn. I want him to turn and feel like he moves way off the ball in this direction and that helps him turn a lot. So you can see with this drill, uh, with the club across the shoulders, all I have him do is I ask him to turn his right hip way back, okay? Um, as he turns in the inside right heel, letting his right leg straighten. You can see his right leg is kind of one line there. When he turns, he maintains that line, which is what I really, really like. His upper body is turning way behind the ball, and you can see you can see the foot joy logo. You can see a lot of his back, a lot of his back right shoulder as a right-handed golfer. I love that so much. So you can see that on the left looks way different than that on the right. So I really like that as a good start. 
So now I'm having him try to make that same turn. And he had it, you know, I didn't really care about the contact at first. We can see he turns. Not perfect, but at least you can see foot joy logo on the on the left and no foot joy logo on the right. So that was priority number one. Um, later on, I'm going to put it on the right. Later that, that session, the first lesson, he was getting more comfortable with the turn. You know, I allowed him to allowed him to lift up his left heel a little bit. He felt like it was much easier for him to turn if he were to lift, lift his left heel. So I was cool with it. Um, so you can see he turns. Foot joy logo. Way more foot joy logo and back of the right shoulder. I love that stuff. And because he's turning more, he's actually coming from the inside now. So that was great. So that was priority number one. I didn't really care too much about anything else. Um, contact. Good contact was just a bonus at that point, especially being... I'm not fresh into it, but he actually managed to play pretty well that weekend in Florida, um, shooting a couple over, so pretty good. Um, he was able to um, get that feel going before the round. So going into lesson two, I needed him to learn how to how to um, add more power into it. So we continue to work on the turn. So again, down the line video on the right is, on the left is video one, I believe. Yes. And then down the line video, uh, down the line video on the right is lesson two. So you can see he comes over quite a bit on the video on the left, and the club comes from more outside the hands, which I don't want. So the video on the on the right now, I have him make sure he make he tries his best to have the club head come from more behind him. So you can see the club head is trailing him more, which allows him to come from the inside more, which allows him to actually hit push straws for once, that one more, and for once in a long time, and he was hitting a lot of push straws. So I didn't really care where the club was in the video on the right, and at this point, I really don't care where the club goes at the top of the backswing. But you can see video on the left compared to video on the right, you can see way more velocity and way more zip on the one on the right. So I didn't really care he was across the line. I didn't care about any of that stuff for him because his main priorities, his main foundations that will help him play better golf and enjoy golf more is to rotate more and then two, use his wrist to help him come from the inside more. So when I watched him do his rehearsals, he did the classic hold your lag, hold your wrist angles, try to place it in positions um, which, which really restricted his movement. So, I gave him a drill, I wish I filmed it, I gave him a drill where I asked him to hit the ball as hard as he can with just his wrist, I had him wrist be as wristy as he can be in the golf swing to come from the inside, to have him release as hard as he can, like the down hinge I always talk about, and when I say the down hinge, I had him, I had him feel like his release was way behind him in this direction of these lines, okay? I want him to feel like the club comes way behind him as he releases so that it comes from seven o'clock of the ball. So it comes from more of the inside and you can see as he comes in, the club actually travels more behind his hands, it shallows earlier. So he's able to deliver the club into the ball from more inside out and he's able to put more force into the ball because he's actually releasing the energy actively as opposed to trying to guide it, trying to hold the angles and time it on the left, which led to a lot of trouble on the right, I had him freely release as hard as he can and as aggressively as he can. And he was actually able to increase his speed significantly. So again, he started at 86 ball speed, 73 club speed. We got it up into the low 80 club speed, 100 ball speed range, which is definitely way more playable than where we were with the... 70, uh, what was it, with the 86 ball speed. So we were touching 100 ball speed on the right in the second lesson compared to 86 ball speed on the left. So way more playable, way more predictable ball flight because the club was coming more from the inside now. And all we have to work on is just turning and getting aggressive with the wrist. So if you're someone who has lost some power, um, who's outside in, who feels like they can't turn, you know, hopefully this video will help. Um, turn first, get aggressive with the wrist. Don't ever hold your angles. Be as aggressive and free-flowing as you can if power is a priority. Um, 
I would start with that. So those are a couple of foundations we really worked on with Jim to help him play and enjoy golf a little bit more in a short period of time. Um, we're going to continue to work on it and make it a little bit easier for him. Um, but that's a winter process. we got four months. So hopefully this video helps. Uh, foundations are rotate and release hard. Um, so hopefully that will help a lot of you guys out if you struggle in this uh, area. So any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy holidays um, for everyone who is taking a break these next two weeks. Um, and uh, stay tuned for the next videos. Thanks, guys.